Well, happy Saturday to you. Um, I'm coming to you live from the Waverly Hall track. Just finished my little walk and just wanted to share a little something with you that I thought about tonight. Um, so I was getting my shoes, uh, you know, putting my tennis shoes on and and uh, just really looked at them and just happened to think um, how far I've come. Um, so four years ago, about, um, well, it was probably about in June, four years ago, I had this crazy idea that I was going to um, train for a half marathon. I know, crazy. I really don't like uh, running at all. Um, so that really was a harebrained idea. But the reason I had decided that was because I knew I needed to do something about my health. And I always knew that, you know, um, that was really going to help me. That always had helped me in the past. Um, just, you know, starting to run, um, would actually help me lose some weight, but, you know, I was in, I was bigger than I'd ever been before and didn't have any energy. Um, and so I went and bought some, some new shoes. Let me show you these cool shoes. So these are my shoes I bought back then. Um, I went to, uh, I went to a big dog running company and had them like, you know, figure out what my foot type was and all that so I could get the best shoes. And, but like July 4th, I got sick and I was supposed to start training that next Saturday, but I got really sick and, um, I, I did go to my train, my first training and like I was, I was having a hard time. Like I was struggling even worse than I would have, um, because I, I was, it was terrible. You know, my, my health was terrible back then. Um, but just really, um, you know, barely made it through that morning session and then, um, Actually, I just, you know, the next, that next Monday, I went to the doctor because I was like, there's something really wrong. Like my eardrum had busted. <laughs> um, you know, it was terrible. And I, I had like an upper respiratory infection. And then a few days afterwards, it wasn't getting any better. It was actually getting worse. I went back to the doctor. Well, I also had another training session. I can remember um, that particular night we went to the track at Columbus High, um, right there at Lake Bottom. And like I, I went around one time and I looked at my instructor and I was like, I've got to go. Like I can't even breathe. And so I, um, I left and, um, you know, didn't, uh, I, I didn't, I stopped because I was so sick. Like the whole month of July I was sick and, um, you know, just, it just kept getting worse and worse and wound up thinking I was going to have to go to the emergency room one morning, um, because I couldn't breathe. Like I, I hadn't slept that night and just was terrible um and actually I remember praying Lord you know I need some help like I don't know if I need to go to the emergency room or what but I, I just I can't breathe and um one of my friends Carmen she called me that morning and she um she said you know I was thinking about you today and just checking to see how you were doing I was like I'm not good <laughs> and um, she was like look I I think you have what I had and you need to go to Thomaston to the family medical center she was like they were the only ones that could help me so I, I mustered up the energy got ready and went to Thomaston and and they did get me well um, and there's a point to this whole story um, but they wound up giving me breathing treatments um, steroids and and all of these things so for someone who had been healthy my whole life, like I had hardly ever been sick, like this knocked me on my back. And um, just like I had hardly ever been out of work for a full day. And in that month, I can remember calling out of work so many times. Like if you put the hours that I worked <laughs> for that whole month of July, I probably worked five days total. And, um, you know, I can remember, you know, calling my boss and like, look, I'm sorry, but I'm sick, you know, <laughs> and she was just like, I just want you to get well. But, you know, I had reached a point where I was so unhealthy that my body was not able to fight off even a simple little cold. And I just really got super sick and was sick for a whole month. And even now, like um, my ear, this ear, it still rings constantly after that eardrum burst and like I mean it's just something I deal with but um you know the ramifications of that and you know but as I've thought about you know just where I am like I'm in a much different place in my health than I was back then and like now like I 
I haven't been sick since um, and just really feel so much better. Like even back then, my allergies were horrible. Um, and even though this spring I did um, have have a few days there where I had really bad allergies, like it's nothing like it was. And so, you know, one of the things that that I attribute that to is really getting healthy myself, um, dropping the weight, um, fueling my body correctly, getting the right nutrition um, and, and like the post I put out there last night, getting plenty of water, like drinking 100 to 130 ounces of water a day is so critical just for your health, um, for your hydration, for all those things that I listed last night. But, um, you know, I thought about, you know, when I talk to, um, when I do health assessments with people, with, with potential clients, and, and even with my clients that come on board, you know, they, they talk to me about how they just are, have just spent so much time caring for other people, um, especially women, um, you know, mamas in particular, like they spend so much time caring for their babies and then caring, maybe even caring for parents who are ailing and then taking care of a spouse, maybe who's sick, that they forget to take care of themselves. And, you know, um, I mean, I didn't have that excuse, but, um, you know, mine was just life getting busy and just not having time. I didn't think to take care of myself, eating on the go, um, doing a lot of grab and go and, and all of that. That was really unhealthy choices. And now I eat on the go, but it's healthy options that I do. Um, but, you know, I, I tell my, my clients all the time. You know, it's just like when you're on an airplane and they're giving you the safety instructions before your flight. The attendant always says, if the cabin pressure should get to a, a an unsafe level or whatever they call it, if, if the cabin should depressurize, again, I don't know what you call that. They say, you know, the oxygen mask will come, will, will be, um, will come down out of the overhead compartments. But please put the mask on yourself before you help anybody else. Um, because what that says is you've got to take care of yourself before you can take care of anybody else. And then I thought about, you know, like how a lot of times when you're, um, you know, when you're dealing with like anxiety and depression and, and lots of other things, addictions, you know, whatever that is, you've got to fix yourself. You've got to break your own chains before you can help break other people's chains. And so, you know, you have to put the mask on yourself. And so, you know, I tell my clients all the time that, you know, you, in order to be your best for, for everybody else in your life that you're trying to serve, you've got to be your best for yourself. You've got to put the mask on yourself um, in order to to help other people and to serve other people. And that's not selfish. Like it's not selfish to take care of yourself um, because honestly, to be the best you for everybody else, you need to be the best you for you. Um, and so do you need to, do you need a mask? Do you need help, um, you know, getting your health in order? Do you need, um, you know, a, a way out? Do you need some chains to be broken in your life? Um, you know, I coach a program that really offers lifelong transformation, um, and it really will help you create those habits and those wins so that you can come out and, and walk four miles, not be winded, um, you know, improve your time every day, um, and be able to, to be at your best and, and feeling your best. Um, you know, and some of my clients, you know, have, have recently told me, um, you know, just the wins that they've had, you know, they're, they're at a place that they never, um, dreamed they would ever be again. Um, I've, I've had several, um, clients recently who told me that, um, they're at a weight that they were, that they weren't, um, haven't been at since they had kids and they're my age or older. And um, some of them are older. Um, and some of them are younger, you know, it, it works, this program works regardless of your age, it works regardless of your, um, you know, whether you need to lose 10 pounds, whether you need to lose 150 pounds or whether you don't need, need to lose any, but you want some healthier habits. Um, I was on a call last night and, um, a guy asked me, um, would this program be good for somebody who wants to gain weight? And I said, yes. Like we can help you with that too, because it's not just for weight loss. It's about getting yourself healthy, creating those healthy habits that are going to serve you long term. And a lot of it starts right here. 
Um, and that is one component of our program is we work on mindset. Like, you know, what do you want to create in your life? What do you want um, your life to look like? And as I was walking tonight, I was listening um, to a podcast and um, I do some personal development stuff sometimes while I'm walking. And there was a statement that said today um, is the last is today. I'm going to live today as if it's the last day of my life. And um, and it said that a dying man um, cannot buy one more breath, even if he gives all of his gold for it. And so, you know, live your best life. Live as if today is the last day of your life. Don't waste today because you're not promised tomorrow. Um, hope that encourages you. Hope it gives you a little food for thought. And um just uh, hope that you will live each day as if it's your last. Y'all have a great night.